Okay. Well, welcome, Otis, and uh, we're excited that you're here. And Thank you. So, but before we start, uh, I was wondering, you've been counseling with the Murray Method for many years, and we were just curious, you know, what um, exactly what that entails and what makes it different from, let's say, traditional counseling? The Murray Method was devised by a lady named Marilyn Murray. It came after some intense therapy on her part, having been raped at eight and had blocked that out of conscious awareness for 36 years. But through some intense counseling, she discovered this, and then she went back to college, got her degree, and in the process of this, she devised these, she began to realize that in her, in the, all of us, is that original feeling child. That child that God placed in the mother's womb. And, but she realized that with different stages of life, that little child gets damaged, it gets hurt, it's in pain, and so it becomes the sobbing, hurting child. Now, after a while and so much pain, the controlling child kicks in and says, you don't have to feel this anymore. You don't have to feel pain. And so uh, it just gets buried. And so this is where we get this concept of the original feeling child being buried. And then we start the process as we dig into those buried emotions of where this child was buried, what caused it to be buried, and we work towards seeing a resurrection of that original feeling child. And as we find that child down there, what happens is people will start then to, they'll bury it, and then they'll start to build a new life on top. Now with Marilyn, she was driven. I mean, she was one of the finest Western art dealers in the United States. Uh, she was involved in everything. She, of course, she could have supported a pharmacy on the amount of pills that she was taking to be supported, be uh, keep going. And finally, it got to the point, the headaches, the stress, all of the emo physical things that were taking place, she just couldn't handle it anymore. So she went into intense therapy. And as a result then, she became alive. That little child was resurrected and, and she began to understand that. And so I had the good fortune of being in a workshop that she did up in the Bay Area. And I have incorporated this along with our inner healing uh, is a part of our therapy. As when we do an intense workshop, as you all have been doing, the, I put a question on the board the first night after I've explained how this buried stuff affects us, and I raise the question, where did you bury your original feeling child? And they look at me like, what are you talking about, man? You lost your mind? But before the weekend is over, on big sheets of paper, they will draw, write, or explain where they buried their original feeling child. And then we will have a resurrection because Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And we have literally seen those original feeling childs come out of that burial spot and become alive. And so, uh, that's the basis that we, uh, her theory works on, and she's presently in Moscow uh, teaching at the University of Moscow her methods. But it gets to the core. It, when we bury that original feeling child, one of two extremes happen. Either we become con just extremely uh, rebellious, uh, or else we become extremely uh, successful, driven, and neither is good. But uh, we want to help people find a balance. And so, and in the 
process of the inner healing, uh, inner healing and the original feeling child coming to life, I tell people, you don't want to get rid of that controlling child because you need that part of you to set boundaries. You don't get rid of that sobbing, hurting child because you need to have the sympathy and, and be able to feel your feelings. But we want to keep them in balance. Thank you. And um, like you said, I, I had the privilege of going through the training and then also through an intensive. And yes, I can tell you my original feeling child is alive and well. Amen. 